I mean, you know, as scared as you can be of losing your job and your future opportunities with this all-powerful guy who is not that powerful, I guess, but, or, okay, whatever, um, you're just sitting there while your friends are bruised black and blue, um, no, no, they either, either never happened or either you just had a really bad sense of self you're a shitty friend because she was there with all this was happening supposedly because what is a person you know a personal assistant 24 7 there or maybe not 24 7 but 27 whatever um is going to see things right or just like shady things are happening in this um apartment above the liquor store in this residence and she didn't say anything until 2021 um so it's really hard for me to to believe her also the dates she is the worst with the dates she's throwing dates there that people were in airports throwing dates that mess was on tour things that don't make any sense whatsoever um but she is suing for damages damages it's cash <laughs> it's money and now uh, she so she's saying sex, sex discrimination and violation of california civil court sexual harassment sexual assault interference with the exercise of a civil rights in violation of the Bain act he was interfering with like her rights like to make a living to have a job even if he gave her the job interfering because he was giving her emotional distress his intentional infliction of emotion of emotional distress um she's demanding a jury a trial by jury uh, they're just they are a bunch of witches i mean they're like really like this guy they're drying him through the mud not only cancel him but also they want him on trial with a jury and you know what the jury is gonna do unless it's just people like me or like the other people on youtube a jury is gonna look to manson and just have like their mind made up um that's what i'm gonna worry about if it's a trial by jury that the jury people you know jury is supposed to be made with let's say there's 12 people whatever and they're supposed to be all walks of life all races all types of people all ages but you know based on Manson's, Manson's story and reputation which I don't believe uh, I believe maybe 5% of all the stuff that's been said about him for the last 25 years but somebody who's not into medicine or who's not into researching and is not curious enough to do their, their, their work is going to just judge him for the way for his songs for the way he looks you know and all these women are going to just go like big bambi eyes and just look innocent thus that i am worried about a trial i really do not want a trial i hope that he does uh he pulls a johnny depp on them and sues all of them for defamation and he doesn't get a trial because a trial uh, with somebody that is like him so you know different in a way and that's why I like him that's why we like him but people out there regular you know people are going to go in jury duty I was in jury duty before I had so much fun I love going to court I love jury duty I like it but when I was there I just realized that I was uh, there with, with a bunch of people that have nothing in common with me so if there's a bunch of people that a bunch of goody goodies and they never heard about him or whatever they heard about him is like oh this is the guy who was blamed for columbine this is the guy who uh, called himself the antichrist this is if this is what people are going to know about him then the trial is going to go it's going to be horrible so you either going to have to just make it very fair to the point that every person on the jury has to be picked as being open-minded and like i said every race every um status you cannot have everybody that is low income you cannot have everybody that is rich you cannot have everybody white or everybody black you can't you can't have a bunch of people like me that like manson either obviously so the trial the idea of the trial unless it, it kind of scares me to tell you the truth <laughs> it does i don't want him to be in a trial um with a jury a trial without a jury so will be different like a cross-examine trial like you know they're doing with amber in the uk amber and johnny that's different but a jury a group of people 
against him, um, for what we know from the past, uh, people just have a tendency just to, you know, just to put, keep him, I mean, they blame him from a shooting in a school where kids die, for crying out loud. I mean, an, a rock star is not responsible for something so big. They, he doesn't work with the government. You know, when Esme Bianco's um, filing is all like, well, he was in my... He was messing with my visa process with immigration. And he was, and Evan said that he had relationship to gang members and he was hacking on her Facebook and her Twitter. Like he is the almighty monster that can do all these things. And um, let's say a jury believes that. That could be problematic. That could be a problem. And I, and I don't want him to be in that type of situation. But I also don't want it to be a situation that he just does a Michael Jackson and starts throwing money at people so people can shut up. That would not be okay either. Um, because then he's going to look guilty, and he's not. So the best thing would be to just wait and see what happens. But um, I kind of in the future hope, I hope that Johnny Depp uh, made some type of statement on Manson because Manson made a statement on Johnny when Johnny needed a statement. So I know they're both in the heat right now, so it's kind of like, maybe like, it's, it's gonna, maybe to stay quiet is <laughs> better. But uh, eventually, um, people will defend him, Courtney Love, Dave Navarro, Billy Corgan, Sean Osborne, Ozzy Osborne, um, Bodhi Tavantes, of course. Uh, there's a bunch of people that defend, they're on his side. And if these people are willing to just you know, go with the truth and just say it without, rep- without being partnered or scared that oh, I'm going to lose a job, I'm not going to be able to make my next movie, I have to be okay with the Me Too movement and the I'm not okay movement and the time's up and I have to be okay with this the liberal part of Hollywood but if I cannot be against these people, no, just go and tell the freaking truth <laughs> you know, if you were called to testify against him um, because there's a lot of people that he worked with, they're not famous, like it, tech people, you know, people that work with him in studio on tour, they those people know him like daily, kind of probably even more than I would say a girlfriend, you know. So people that are on tour with him nine months out of the year, I think those people are the ones that need to be called to testify. Also, you know, the the a lot of them are males, so they have nothing to gain or nothing to lose because they don't want to be with the guy, they're not in love with the guy, they don't care, they're already working for somebody else. He you know just crew people, so I'm trying to say the crew, the crew that knows him because otherwise, if it's just the actresses and their agenda, it's not gonna look good. I mean, it's like I'm not trying to be negative, I'm just I just know how things go around here. We know what Amber her tutorial of fakeness, uh, of fake um, allegations, how she squeezed the Me Too movement and she squeezed the Time's Up and all that and she milked it for her advantage. We know that these women are capable of doing that. So I hope that they reach to people that know him for a long time or they work with him in the worst situations like on a tour bus for nine months. Those are the people that I think are going to be able to say, well, this guy, yeah, I mean, he just... He was not good. He was doing all this to his women. Or maybe not. Or maybe it will be the opposite. Um, which I think it will be the opposite because I don't think he did it. He did none of it. So then I keep going with Walters and I keep... The reason I have three of them open right now, uh, Ashley Walters, Ashley Morgan, and Esme Bianco is because it is copy and paste. The only difference is Bianco from England. So she is saying that she was human trafficked right yeah she was human traffic um and that she was brought here with the pretense of a video that never existed again i'm gonna put a link on my video i'm gonna have to because just saying is probably not enough phantasmagoria this movie he's been trying to make for ages and i remember she, he was with Dita and he married her. He was already talking about Phantasmagoria. I'm not talking about 2005. He always wanted to make this movie. There's proof, plenty of interviews that he talks about how much he wants to make this Phantasmagoria movie. So Esme is pretty much saying that that was a lie, that he just made that up just to bring her here to the States. 
So that alone is going to make you look like a liar because we can prove that he's been trying to work on this movie for a long time. He didn't make this, this shit up just for her. So I jumped to 24, item 24, because in my other video I was already just going around it uh, with Esme. And well, the Nazi knife again during sex. Okay, he got it with a Nazi knife during sex without her consent. It took pictures of the cuts of her body. Then he posted photos online without her consent. Okay, where? Like, if they are somewhere in the dark web, then still, we need to see that to believe you. Like, where? He's taking these pictures to blackmail them. It seems like that's what Evan said. Evan said he will, he will put us in this Nazi paraphernalia or really embarrassing poses and take pictures of us so he can use them to blackmail us in case they would talk. Well, they're all talking now. So men said, where are the pictures? I want to see the pictures, you know, the pictures don't exist. Um, the blackmail pictures or the, the videotapes that he was going to use for blackmailing them, they have, nothing has come up. It's been five months of this circus, of this BS, five months, and there's no pictures, nothing released against any of these women that keep releasing against him. She has a picture of, uh, Esme put a picture on Instagram of her back supposedly with her, the the marks allegedly from a whip that I think they're marks from a rope. And I don't think it's her back, but if it's her back, it's marked from being tied up. And if it's not her back, then she is committing perjury big time. But I don't know if you post something on Instagram, it's considered perjury if you lie on Instagram. It is not. So that's what they're taking advantage of, the fact that they can lie on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. It's not the law, really. Um, but if she brings those pictures to court and they realize that was not her back and her muscles and her shoulders, she's going to be so screwed because that is perjury. Um, so if she took the picture of her back, okay, let's say, let's pretend it's her back. Why she didn't take pictures of the, of the cuts of the the gadgets that she said she had on her stomach okay why she didn't take pictures of when she when he was biting her and leave her and left her blue and black with bruises uh, but she took a picture of her back and posted on instagram um why because you never because because this didn't happen if the back happened it was not the story that she tells and how she says it happened Oh, it's simply not her back. It may be somebody else's back. She knows so many people in the fetish bondage scene that she could easily just grab one of those guys, one of those guys that, you know, tell her friends, hey, if you know any of these slaves that you have, because dominatrix and stuff, um, yeah, I want to take a picture of his back, or her back, or whatever. Very easy to find somebody wounded to take a picture of. It's not that hard, especially in that type of scene, you know. So, which she was very acquainted to, and she was, she was not just the actress on Game of Thrones. Before that, she was big time on the scene, whipping people, getting whipped. There's pictures on Instagram that she's eating from the floor, like kind of like a that type of like power exchange, humiliation type of fetish type of thing. And there's another picture that she has her best friend, even if their friend's still on a leash, right and. and it looks pretty bad. Even if even if their friends that are messing around, she has them on a leash, and he looks like a like old slave, and like she's like a dumb. And then she says she doesn't know anything about bondage, and she says that she didn't know what the hell he wanted when he said he wanted to bite her. She didn't know what he was talking about. So much crap. So much BS. So much. So what I'm saying is like, how come you have a picture of your back, but you don't have a picture of the the cuts with this famous Nazi knife. Not only that, but I was kind of in the other video, I was saying was also, the dates are wrong, the dates are completely overlap each other, uh, the dates with Evan are wrong as well, because she was in LAX going to with her new boyfriend somewhere, she wasn't in his bathroom in May 20, uh, 2010, and then the dates of, the, of, of 2011, they also overlap, with other stuff that he was doing with his wife, Lindsay, he was with her in 2011. So as long as he was with all these people at the same time, 
he's like such a pimp. <laughs> Manson is Manson is like he's capable of being with all these people at the same time and not get caught. He's capable of like messing with your visa and your stat immigration status. He's capable of going into your Facebook and your Twitter and like hacking you. He's just like a genius, this guy. What an asshole, right? Seriously. Um, so she's also the problem with this is she's also blaming uh, Tony Kula which is his manager for 25 years that by the way drop him after 25 years of a relationship, working relationship like saying that well the manager was there and they kind of let this pass and they brush it under the, under the rug and let this abuse keep happening yeah, I don't think so um, in 2013 Bianco attended one of uh, Warner shows in Las Vegas oh so you were there first. You met the guy in 2009. She said she didn't do anything with him. Maybe. But then they started like, hooking up in 2010 to 2011-ish. And all this happened. You were bruised. You were cut. You were whipped and all that. And in 2013, you're going to a show to see this guy. Not only that, but in 2014... You can look on Instagram. She went to the wedding, to Twig, uh, Twig Ramirez's wedding. Twig Ramirez is Marilyn Manson's best friend and bass player forever, you know. And um, he was the best man in the wedding. And the person that he decided to go with was Esme in 2014. So she doesn't seem too scared on those wedding pictures. Um, and she doesn't seem so isolated and so abused either and so scared of him or the situation why he's gonna take somebody to a wedding as his guest somebody that he hates that he abuses he, why? it makes no sense whatsoever and then this the whole thing about the, the post-traumatic stress disorder and the anxiety, depression, and the panic attacks I'm not gonna go over it I said it in video before how if you don't have a paperwork of their diagnosis and your treatment plan and you don't show uh, how many times you go to therapy a week you know um, what medications you take and for how long you've been taking them and who's who's your doctor and what's your treatment plan and are you in a 12-step program so you what kind of program are you otherwise you can't if you don't have those paperwork don't they go and go to court and um, or go on Instagram or anything and say oh I got this I got that say you have symptoms of these things you can't say you have it if you are not for sure that you have it so this is gonna bite her in the butt eventually all of them because they all have the same disorders I'm not making fun of people that have that I'm making fun of people that make fun of having the disorders right that's a different thing want an employee fraud to bring okay this fraud fraud to bring uh, Ms. Bianco to the United States. He promised work opportunities that never appeared while inserting himself in her visa process, BS. Ms. Bianco recently relied upon Ms. Warner promises of work due to his connections to the industry. Like, he's not an actor or a director, really. He's Marilyn Manson, he's his own thing, right? And he's, she's an actress and she wants to work in TV shows and movies. What, what he was gonna do for her? Like, really, like, what, what is she talking about? All the opportunities that he can bring. Yeah, I mean, he can introduce her to people, like some people that he might know, but it's not that he's Steven Spielberg, or he is, you know, Quentin Tarantino, or he is uh, Martin Scorsese, I don't know, any director. Um, and it's not like, it's hard. You know, if she was a musician, then I will understand that passage, but... She's saying that he could help her with work, and he's just Manson. He's he's not a movie producer. He doesn't produce, like, big HBO shows. So I don't know. Um, but this is what the, this is what her lawyer told her to say, or the lawyer typed the whole thing. So it was fraud. They're trying to say that it was fraud, that they lied to her to bring her to California from the U.K., under pretense of some, a movie that never existed or a movie that was not um, upon information they believe that believe uh, that uh, Miss Bianco rival no effort was made to create Phantasmagoria film I said a hundred times that he's been trying to make Phantasmagoria for a long time so for them to say there's no effort that's going to bite him on the butt too because there's a lot of interviews that he can present 
and a lot of interviews since he was married with Dita that he was trying to talk about Fantasmagoria and the life of Lewis Carroll, the writer from Alice in Wonderland. We know, everybody that knows Mason, everybody that's into kind of like that type of film or that type of um, imagery, and, and even Alice in Wonderland, which happens to be my favorite book of all times. Um, he's been, the dude has been trying to work on that forever. And I don't know why it's not lifting and why he didn't do it yet, but Bianco's pretty much saying that he made that up. That is the big, big, gigantic lie. And then that he was in her visa process. That's another thing that is, I find it really hard to believe that he was as powerful as like the FBI or something like that, as a, you know, immigration agent. That's a big deal here. And this is an artist, not a, you know, government agent. Um, like espionage, you know, he's like, I mean, like seriously, they're just giving him a power that he doesn't have. They're making him sound like he has all these powers that, that he doesn't. And the hacking and all that. Anyway, um, he was able to control Miss Bianco by turning it to withdraw support if she displeased him or this, this or not obey him. And Miss Wonder is further demonstrated by preventing Miss Bianco. This is like, I don't know how she's going she, she's gonna to prove this. From escaping the situation by confirming her to this bedroom, threatening it of the bedroom, the bad girl's room they talk about, threatening her if she attempts to leave the apartment without permission, and restricting her communications, so she was her phone was restricted or bugged or something, and interfering with her visa process again. She's gonna have to show emails or messages um, from immigration or from from her, you know to him and for him saying no hell hell no you're not gonna do what I say well I'm gonna fuck up with your visa like I need to see that <laughs> otherwise it's just her and her own paranoia and the way I see it is like you make sure that you got your visa you don't rely upon anybody with something so important you will think so maybe it's her fault because she was not in top of it she didn't send the paperwork or she didn't prove what she needed to prove to immigration this seems like her problem more than anything. Okay, plaintiff was also required to provide unpaid um, labor. This is hilarious. During April 2011, again, that's a weird day because he was already with his now, now wife. So I don't know how this is happening on this period of time. This includes serving and preparing snacks. <gasps> Poor Esme, she was preparing snacks. Bringing food and snacks for Mr. Warner and his guests, cleaning his apartment, consulting his new album, providing uncredited backup vocals during uh, the album Born Villain. You guys tell me if you, I mean, I listened to Born Villain not a hundred times, like not too much, but I did listen to it uh, quite a bit. I don't remember backup vocals by Esme Bianco anywhere, but um, she's saying that she provided all this for free and pay labor uh, and being offered up to his guests and bandmates to spank. Maybe I believe that part <laughs> because that's something that she will do. That she will be able to, she will be willing to do. So maybe that part is true. I don't know. Ms. Warner implied that because he got brought Ms. Young to the United States and provide housing that idea that she owned him labor and sexual intimacy because he was paying for all this stuff, to both say. Plenty of fear for her safety and that of her friends and family if she did not comply. What friends? Family was in the UK. What Manson was going to do? Manson was going to just, yeah, all powerful Manson was going to fuck up her family in the UK from here. Friends, I don't know what friend she's talking about. The friends, the only friend I can think of is Ashley Walters, which is the other person that is suing him that they're best buddies with. And they did not stop in 2014, 2015. There's a, a picture of them in 2017 on a Manson concert. And they tag Manson on it. And there's pictures of them like eating from the floor. And it says, sweet dreams are made of these. Sweet dreams are made of these. Like... And that's from 2016. Anyway, um, if you are so scared of your boss, um, or in this case, your boyfriend slash boss, whatever, you're not going to just be quoting his lyrics and <laughs> going to his shows and, and just 
tagging him on pictures is very strange so then she's also suing uh Cuba management that his management dropped him after 25 years but she's also suing the management because she's trying to say that the management was on it like they were they were trafficking her they were the, the trafficking was Mason's fault but also the management fault for not stopping Mason somehow it's all her it's all on her moving to the United States is on her not taking care of her visa is on her not eating is on her she's skinny she wants to stay skinny because she's an actress that's why she wasn't eating I don't think it has nothing to do with him her cleaning the house a little bit the apartment and making snacks for him and his friends it's like kind of like a boyfriend girlfriend you know thing even sometimes even if you're not romantically involved with the person but just you live with your friend you're like oh man come on you're such a slob okay you don't want to make your bed i'll make your bed oh my god can you clean the bathroom away well, i do it because you never do it something like that I, I imagine maybe him being you know sloppy and maybe a little bit all over the place and her just picking up the apartment is that unpaid labor that is not unpaid labor or trafficking Ms. Bianco interact daily with Ms. Ms. Uh, Mr. Warner bandmates, producer and assistants. That's the people, that's what I was saying. Where are those people? We need the statements from them, from the crew, the bandmates, the, the assistants, the people that were on the dirt with him nine months out of the year. Because who knows it more than somebody who's on tour with you for so long? From the bus driver to the person that has that gives you food to your makeup artist everybody needs to just be on it not just the people that you think is convenient for you like your best buddies um that will be important if there's a trial you know and even if there's no trial it will be important for those people to come out and say oh yeah he was a mess i saw him doing all this or i don't want to get involved i don't know maybe maybe not or some people are going to say that he didn't do it uh, and then this women are going to be in a lot of trouble Mr. Bianco herself will contact uh, management when um, Mr. Warner ten temper tantrums ensue it started. And Mr. Warner assistant also coordinated Ms. Bianco travel and lodging each time she visited Mr. Warner with full knowledge of the management and act as Bianco's babysitter when Mr. Warner was not present. Okay. Mr. Warner management had a vast interest in supporting the violent tendencies to encourage the creation of his art and the promotion of the brand Marilyn Manson. Well, okay. If they were so into it and so and how come they drop him just now? They drop him after 25 years of working with him. How come they drop him? If they were just torturing this in this women and doing all this that she's saying, how come they drop him? They drop him because he's getting canceled. They drop him because all this lies. It's starting from Everett Wood, which is the root of the whole evil problem, and then Esme, and then Ashley, and then the two Ashes, and then the rest of them. That's why um, the management dropped him. Not because he was being violent, but because they was they were they didn't want to be associated with him anymore because they believe women, just like people do. That's why he was dropped, not because he was being violent. Sexual harassment, sexual battery, what we know what this means. Warner used drugs and force and threats of force to hurt. Sexual correction acts from Ms. Bianco on multiple occasions. Warner, the R word, Ms. Bianco in around May 2011. This is a big primer that with a date as well because there is something from Ashley Walters here on her file talking about 2011 and they were not if Manson was letter R mm -mm, doing this to Esme in 2011 Ashley Walters was in the apartment working as his assistant so she was pretty much like watching her best friend getting assaulted like I don't understand because Ashley Walters says that she was there 24 7 because she was personal assistant like not even like an assistant why well, you know 9 to 5 personal assistant like always there whatever the guy needed it you gotta go get it even if it's ridiculous right your personal assistant is like it can be from paying the bills for the guy or just getting him food or going by and makeup for him whatever you do kind of like you're a jack of all trades if you're a personal assistant so 
she was there when all those happening to Esme, which has happened to be one of her friends. I mean, come on. Did she just stay, did she just stay there and watch? Because she was afraid. I'm sure that's a perfect answer for my question. Oh, because I was afraid of my opportunities being, what he was going to say about me in the industry and blackmail me. And the pictures that he took of me were in the Nazi stuff. He was going to release pictures if I say something. If your friend, best girlfriend, best friend, or just a friend, or just another, just another woman is getting raped and assaulted, whatever, in any way assaulted, you're just going to just chill about it because the future opportunities you don't want to miss. Because that's kind of like her words. Her words are the future opportunities that she doesn't want to, that she doesn't want to miss. As a photographer, she wanted future opportunities. And I'm like, even at the expense, even at the expense of your friends getting assaulted, this is it's not um, it, it's not right. I'm like, right? It doesn't make any sense. So which one is it? Like, if you're saying that you were with him all the time, Ashley Walters, because she was um, 24/7 personal assistant, then she. Then why she's not talking about what she supposedly saw or witnessed? Why she's not using that on her file, on her filing? I don't think with Esme, it's like, where are the pictures of this? Mar I mean, she took pictures of, of her back, posted on Instagram. Like, Instagram is the medical office, right? It's the police station, it's the doctor office, Instagram is everything. And then, didn't took pictures of the bruises that she was... She, he bit her and she was blue and black allegedly she says that she was blue and black another thing I don't understand is that Manson coming out Manson knows he lives in Hollywood he knows the paparazzis and TMZ everywhere and you can go on YouTube and just put Marilyn Manson paparazzi and you're gonna have a bunch of clips and have a laugh because they are hilarious because <laughs> they are really funny clips um, he's usually with a girl if it's not Lindsay which is his wife now is another ex-girlfriend or one of this and you think he's just gonna beat them up to pulp and then just show them off around for TMZ to take pictures of them and take them to a restaurant these people that were food deprived and take them to the movie theater in Hollywood Boulevard really if, if these girls are not in a good shape he's gonna incriminate himself like that I mean that's like one of the things that just gets me and again I always talk about where were the males in the apartment why there's no males? Why there's no male assistants? Why there's no buddies? Why there's no like chef? I know why there's no bandmates going to the house. It's all this from 2009 and a half to 2011. The apartment above the liquor store is all women going in and out and getting tortured, and there's no males um, watching any of this or stopping any of this from happening. Um, it's very strange and this whole time they are able to post on Instagram because you can go all the way and you can actually see her their Facebook and their Twitter and they're talking about he took the phones away or he put he bugged their phones and tracked their phones but you can see as yes, maybe Bianco and Evan Richard Wood Instagram not Instagram let me back then Facebook and Twitter and they were posting things so they were posting about premieres they were going and shows they were going to work on and movies they were going to do so how come they were they were able to post about those things but they were not able to call their family like just you see <laughs> and um of course this is all about money it's about damages damages is money and emotional distress you know that is the thing with this is this is what's the problem with this it's just really hard to prove but it's also really hard to unprove. Um, it's really hard for him. It will be really hard for him to prove that he, um, unless there's messages like, oh, we're going to mess you up. You know, if you don't do this, I'm going to mess you up, whatever. Unless there's something like that, it's going to be really hard to prove that this happened or that this didn't happen. So I'm trying to say, you know, um, if I was cross examining her Esme, Ask me, Bianco, I'll be like, well, where's your diagnosis? Where's your doctor? Where's your psychiatrist? What type of medication you take? Do you have what you say you have? That'll be my first question. And then where's those emails? All that stuff about Phantasmagoria, that he sent you the script of Phantasmagoria, that he told you where you guys were going to shoot the movie, like where, 
just where are those emails? Those are very important. If those were work emails, like she planned it, she's saying that they were work emails, not flirty stuff, because they were not together until 2011. They were work related communications, then you can have to show them. Um, or we just have to believe you, I guess. Okay, we just have to believe you. I don't, but a lot of people do. And then the whole thing about him moving too fast. You know, that's something that I'm, I'm that I'm not, I won't be surprised he does that. That he moves too fast. That he gives. That he's texting them all night. That he's calling them a hundred times a day, and that he um, gives them the key to his apartment. That he tells them to move in. I think the Manson had a moment after Evan. Okay, she left him all all messed up in the head. And before Lindsay, that he had a moment that he was not doing good. He was not doing good, like physically and mental, whatever. And I'm not surprised if he was just trying to get hook up with whoever he could because he felt like shit or he felt lonely. And that is normal. Manson also can feel lonely, just like everybody else. And giving your key to your apartment is stupid, it's dumb. But it's not a crime. And giving people drugs and telling people, yeah, you can stay over for a couple months until you get set up in your apartment, but you can stay in mine. It's not such a bad thing. I mean, he might be, this might be look as he's possessive because he texts a lot, he calls a lot. I don't, I don't know, like I text a lot. Like in the future, somebody's gonna come up and say like, oh, she texts me 27 times on Christmas day. So like, Yes, emotional distress. No, I don't know. Like, block me. Turn off your phone. Right? If you don't want the guy to keep texting, you turn off your phone or block him. So this is, it's just, um, it's a bunch of, you know, a bunch of little girls throwing tantrums. That's what I see. That's what I call the coven of witches because it's almost like, it's kind of insulting to actually, to witches, to call them witches. But it's almost like what they're doing, you know. And it started with the whole Lolita thing that Evan was obsessed with Lolita to the point that she she became Lolita. Cause Lolita is a sick, narcissistic teenager that fucks up the life of every adult there. Her mom, the, the, the boyfriend, everybody. That's the thing that she was obsessed with. Evan was obsessed with Lolita. Those are her glasses, those are her outfits. It had nothing to do with Manson. So she started the whole thing. And then this whole, this whole innocent like the, this this lack of responsibility and this innocence like they didn't know what he was about they didn't know that he likes to tie people up they didn't know that he will bite here and there they didn't know that he would have you know that his house was going to be cold that his house his house was not going to be bright like my kitchen right now of course not of course it's manson like <laughs> And maybe, maybe actually it was bright. Maybe this whole thing about the house being black, pitch black, maybe that's bullshit too. But I kind of believe the house was dark because, I mean, I know people that are not even famous, but they, they live that type of life and they're painters and sometimes they're just like they sleep all day and they work, they work at night and the artists and the house is dark. I don't know. Sometimes. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't, and the house can be too cold, it can be too hot. Some people that do a lot of drugs are not going to have food in their kitchen because why? For what? But also that's a big inconsistency because there was food in the, in the house. And Mesa didn't look too skinny back then, if you remember those two years. So I don't think the whole food deprivation, I mean, they can say that about him and back in 99, in 2000. 99, where he made mechanical animals, that he was super skinny. He was doing a lot of cocaine. This is him admitting that, uh, just me saying it. But now, during that time, in all those pictures and videos of him coming in and out of restaurants and eating and dining out, if you put all those things together, as you see, there's a bunch of, um, it's, it's ridiculous. And then the dates that don't make sense, you know, if you're going to say this person was here and there being abused, died of an amazement, and then there's pictures of Evan in LAX leaving with her new boyfriend in May 20, um, 2010, then you got a big problem in your hands, you know. They might say, well, I was nervous, or the dates are wrong, because when I filed this, I was in a lot of distress, or maybe I messed up the dates. They might say that. They might say that I'm calling it right now, because that's kind of how these people roll. They might say that. 
they're not going to accept any responsibility whatsoever. Nothing that happened to them is, is their fault. Nothing. If her visa got revoked and her visa got messed up, her status got messed up, or she lost um, movie roles or work, whatever, because her immigration status is man's fault. It's not her fault for being on top of that. You gotta be on top of that. You, your agent has to be on top of that. Like, it's man's fault if they lost weight. It's man's fault if they did drugs. It's man's fault if, you know, everything. The emotional distress, the damages. It's Manson's fault because they told he told them to pull the car, to to not move the car until seven in the morning with all these Machiavelli crazy ideas of assaulting her. No, he probably, I'm, I, I'm sure it's LA. Parking is a pain in the ass. <laughs> Maybe he was just being nice by saying, "Hey, you can leave the car here until seven. Like, you know, if you take this is the thing with the human brain, you can make everything a crime. You can make any, you can frame absolutely anybody that you want to frame with the right words and the right fairy tales and the right story and the people that back you up. So a lot of people backing these chicks up. A lot of people backing the whole, this whole me too, thumbs up, I'm not okay agenda. So I want to see the people backing him up because it's going to, and it's going to happen eventually. It will. It has to. So that was a little bit of a little bit of Esme, a little bit of Ashley mixed up. And the reason I mixed it up is because they are best friends after all. And oh, and also, weird or not, it is very strange. You don't, like, you're so scared of this guy and you're just going to, um, of course, they don't follow him now, right? But you're going to just like his post from 2018 and I have it on my Instagram here and it's like seriously okay so really good pages on Instagram to, to check out okay because they don't have uh, YouTube channels this be, this guys don't have but they have super good pages the stand by your Manson is awesome I think a lot of we learn a lot of stuff from them stand by your Manson pathological propaganda is awesome Manson defenders is awesome. Um, together against all others is awesome. I know they're with hard names. I'm gonna try to put the links of all these people back then. Of course, Greta and Colonel Kurz are awesome. Uh, women, females, we're speaking now finally, not, not trying to buy the BS. Just because I am a woman, I'm not gonna say here and go like, oh yeah, he did it. It's not, it's not. It's a matter of human rights, not women rights. Um, Pathological propaganda, okay, those are really good. Just good, there's a lot of I love there's so many. When this just happened in February and March and all the way, I'm like, oh my God, I didn't see no pictures. I didn't see nobody supporting him. And then people start popping out on, on YouTube and on Facebook and on Instagram and that really made me happy. I mean, I wish the situation wasn't happening, but it's happening the fact that um, people are just going, you know, backing him up and with facts. And because what we're talking about are, I might not have a tangible fact that I can show you right now, but I'm making sense when I tell you the dates are wrong and you can go and look it up for yourself, the dates are wrong. But I'm telling you that as a mental health worker that I am, when you go and tell somebody, I got this, I have OCD, I got this, you're going to have to prove it. Otherwise, you should have to say that you have symptoms off. So, next time you're lying to somebody, you just, you know, like if I said, I have COVID, oh my God, I have COVID. I gotta, I gotta prove that I have COVID. Or I can just say, oh, well, yesterday I had some symptoms of COVID. You see, the difference between that, between saying I have panic attacks all the time and say, well, I sometimes I have symptoms of panic attacks. So it makes a world difference, seriously. Um, and it makes you look like, a liar if you don't have those things and those things are not a joke you should not be saying that you have things that you don't have but this is people that are lying through their teeth so I won't I'm not surprised about them lying about their mental health they've been lying about pictures and bruises and cuts and and there are pictures here that were liked by them the guy from The Walking Dead he sucks he unfollow him a lot of people unfollow him People that don't follow him, awesome, Billy Corgan, Connie Love, 
Dave Navarro, Jonathan Davis, Sharon Osbourne, um, well, Alice Cooper, Rob Zombie, but there's a lot of people that unfollow him, and that just sucks. They suck. They just believe in the whole, they're, they're believing the hype. It's very sad. And there are some things that actually, well, there's light. What were you, what are you doing looking at your abuser Instagram and liking his post? I mean, she was not that smart to delete them all. Because I found them, I know I found them right now this moment, but I know, I know they were somewhere. And also, like, on her own page, Ashley and Esme, they're not poor. They're not actually saying that she wants damages uh, because he caused her so much stress that she had to stop working as a personal assistant and that she lost all the jobs to work for him. So she started, she, she wants money for it. But I'm like, well, that she should be more careful what she posts on her Instagram because she's, like, traveling all over the place. Even her bio says traveler. Like, there's pictures of her in every hotel you can imagine and every continent. So you don't seem too poor to me. I'm sorry. Um, it's just... That's what I think. <laughs> and I feel bad that he posted so much stuff in so many shows that he invited people over, he led into his life. And then what ends up happening is, you know, just being completely used. Um, I love this picture of him and his dad. Picture of him and Johnny. It's very, um, it's very unnerving that we're just in this, I'll find them eventually. Like I said in my other video, I don't want to be part of the, um, you know, the, the propaganda and just raising my son and my daughter to think that it's okay for them to lie. It's okay for them to meet a little white light here and another white light over there. Say, oh, this bully did this to me or my teacher did this to me, you know, and without proof. I mean, I don't, I don't want boys in the future to be um, never believe, but also I don't want women in the future to be never believe. I want to be able to open the newspaper, the newspaper, open my Google and look at the news, and if some celebrity says, "Oh my God, my my husband beat me up," I want to be able to believe her. You see what I mean? And and right now I don't, and it's it it makes me sad. Um, that that has to wrap back to us the sense of we need to believe people women and men and especially we need to believe children and you're not a child when you are 19 Evan Roger Wood when I mean we need to believe children I mean you know when a social worker gets a call because a, a child is getting abused a child not 18 and not 19, a child, then we have to believe them. Then we have to believe women and men equally. And that's what social workers are for, mental health workers, cops, if you want to take it all the way to the FBI, okay, the FBI, um, to investigate these things. This cannot be just believe at face value, especially when it comes from where it's coming from, from people that are always naked in their acting jobs, they have a past of just spanking people and whipping people and they know exactly what they're doing because you can go and find that stuff on her. Just look it up. And you, it's going to take you to Pornhub. That's what it's going to take you to. And there's nothing wrong with even being a, a sex worker or a, or, a, or a video sex worker or porn star. I'm not, it, it's just, I'm not judging that. What I'm judging is I am judging the victimhood and uh, this trend, it's, it's like trendy, you know, it's trendy these days to just complain about things that didn't happen or things that happen and you just like, like 5% of reality and then everything else you just like completely, completely fabricated, like he said in his statement. 
Um, I'm not even going to talk about the woman that says that he spit on her, which I think he did because there's a video that he spit on her camera, not on her, on her camera, and she wants $35,000 from him. I think that's funny. Uh, I'm not even going to talk about her. <laughs> it's just like, seriously. Um, another thing I don't understand is when they say things like other depositions, they're like, oh, I was scared. I was scared for my life. I thought he was going to kill me. Okay. And then 10 years later, they go like, well, at the moment when it was happening, I didn't know what was going on. You see how that's a contradiction? You scared for your life. You thought this was the biggest monster ever and you thought that he was going to kill you. Evan said that, or her testimony, Evan said, I felt like he was going to kill me. He said he got gang members that could kill me. She said all that, right? But then she also said just now, a um, couple of months ago, that she didn't know what was happening. And it took her years and years and eight, nine years to understand what happened to her. Well, I thought you would understand in the moment when you said that she could, that he could kill you, that he could get a gang, um, gang activity to kill you. So which one is it? You didn't realize until years later that he was dangerous, but in your deposition, the first deposition that she made, which is a big deal because it was in front of Congress to pass a law, she lied. She lied to Congress. This is like, it's beyond. It's one thing is lying on Instagram, another thing is lying on TMZ, but lying to Congress, the United States. That's what Evan did. It's just, um, people keep obsessing about the, the, the new girls the later ones and i'm just saying like the whole thing started with her and lying on per like just perjury like seriously also there's another thing i just make another video soon about everett wood's brother being a bit of, a bit of a bad kid um and just having a couple arrest and a bad um not credit a bad um uh, in his background and what are these his arrest is sexual battery so i don't know if he actually did it or not or it was dismissed or what but her brother his name is ira um would has doesn't have a, a clean past and i'm not saying that you are just like a brother or that you have to but it's kind of funny and that she's so strongly you know on this defense of women and and not and it's just about her it's not a women it's not like if her brother did something then she doesn't give a fly fuck about it you know um if her brother did i'm not making this up i'm not i cannot even make this up even if i try in this spitting thing i mean i'm telling you we can just go and and talk about the spitters out there and you know from any heavy metal Thinking about Metallica, the singer from Metallica. I'm thinking about Ozzy. Oh man, you don't want to be under Ozzy, and the on the on the mosh pit. Ozzy is a maniac. Ozzy Osbourne gets a bucket, uh, with water, usually cold water, um, which is I think feels great, and dumps it on the fans in the mosh. <laughs> Ozzy drinks from a bottle of water and he spits, and doesn't spit on somebody, but per continuously spit. Um, Justin Bieber spit, uh, you know, Eminem back in the day, a lot of rappers also, is, I mean, I, I don't know, uh, Mick Jagger from Rolling Stones, you know, I mean, anybody that has a little bit of rock and roll them spit once in a while, you know, and I just think that it has to be on him, he's the one that has to be caught that day, and I agree that if he, um, if he did something wrong to her camera, then he should pay for it. But two years later, two years later, she's trying to ask for $35,000. No, I say I wasn't going to talk about her, and I'm talking about her. Um, yeah, and then I'm just going to, in another video, I'm going to talk about Prince, the artist Prince. Rest in peace, the passed away. I'm not going to talk shit about Prince. I'm not going to be so shady. But I'm going to talk about what Prince, one of Prince's ex-wives or girlfriends was saying about him and how it's a bit of a copy and paste of what they're saying about Manson. And it got completely dismissed. And nobody even took uh, the time of the day to even read it. 
Um, okay, I'll find this later because it's incredible how these girls are liking Mason. Mason's post from 2018. Uh, you were scared for your life when she he was on you, chasing you with an axe. You, you, you thought he could kill you. This is their words, not mine. But now you're saying that you didn't know you were so blocked, you're so... Your dissociation and your mental disorder is so so messed up that you didn't know that was happening until now. But you 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 knew it was happening in the moment because you just said it. So, um, don't lie. <laughs> don't lie to Congress. Don't lie. You know. Don't say you have things you don't have. It's a very dangerous thing. And and everybody starts doing this. And I'm not gonna be surprised if Manson is not the last one. Because when this was happening to Johnny, I was like, oh man, this is tough. I can imagine somebody happens to, this happened to somebody else, and then it happened to Manson. And I don't think he's going to be the last one, honestly. And I think people are just going to keep believing. Um, that's why I don't think a trial by jury is a good idea. Because people already have an idea of Manson that unless they're watching YouTube, <laughs> Or they're doing the research and watching several YouTube channels, like the big, big ones, talking about medicine, then people are not going to change their mind unless their mind has to be changed in a drastic way. So that's what I hope that people that know him for years and crew members and people that tour with him for years are maybe able to give um, a character no, a character letter about who this guy is. Well, yeah, he's a drunk. Okay, well, he was all over the place. He was drunk. He was yelling at me, and and I was working for him, and he was whatever. Like, you know, okay, things like that. But it, when you talk about um, cutting people, and it doesn't matter if it's a Nazi knife, but it's just a knife. A knife is bad enough. They keep saying the word Nazi. I already say, I already said a hundred times in my videos why they keep using the word Nazi. Um... Somebody has to say, oh, well, wait, hold on. Yeah, I saw him doing that. Or I heard the girls screaming or whatever. But I have a feeling that the people that work for him uh, for years or for just months are not going to say that. Otherwise, it, they would have come already. Also, Evan and Esme and Ashley talk about blackmailing pictures that he took of them in compromising poses or compromising of wearing Nazi paraphernalia or things that will embarrass them in the future. And she took, he took those pictures to use them for blackmailing. Wow, where are the pictures now? He doesn't seem he's blackmailing anybody. Um, otherwise, the pictures will be all over. TMZ will be showing you pictures of, you know, all this bad stuff that he's supposed to have. So that, we want one of the pictures. I want the doctor report. I want the psychologist or the psychiatrist saying that they have what they're saying they have. I'm sick and tired of people self-diagnosing themselves and be like, oh, I have this, I got that. Or oh, you have that, or oh, I have it too. Or oh, I'm borderline, you're borderline, I'm a narcissist. Or oh, you're this, you're this, I'm bipolar. Are you bipolar? I'm bipolar. Like, it's crazy. And people go on YouTube and learn psychology or whatever, and they do this personality test. Don't do that. <laughs> and they diagnose themselves. This is really bad. I mean, do it. If you want to do it, do it. They're fun. But, uh, but you can't use that as a diagnosis and just because you got traumatized or because something bad happened to you that doesn't mean you have post-traumatic stress disorder just because you don't like people or you kind of antisocial and you don't like to be in a big crowd it doesn't mean you have anxiety you have symptoms of so that is just old okay, for one hour talking about this anyway um i don't know leave me a comment whatever what's better doing it live or doing this um uploading it later i actually like doing live better because i don't like the lights in my kitchen and all that and i'm just too lazy to fix it <laughs> but um if it's glitchy then i do the videos this way maybe it's better and um thank you and just don't believe everything that you read just don't bye